Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel once again. And first of all, I would really like to thank all of you guys out there who have been supporting this small channel of mine with baby steps and the channel is moving ahead in small and steady steps, which I really appreciate. I don't expect an unrealistic growth and this is enough for me. Uh, the love which you are giving me, please keep throwing back this love at me. I really need it and I appreciate this. And I'm sorry for this gap between my previous video and this video because I'm a working class guy and since the world is opening back, so I was busy with my normal schedule. I work from eight to five, but I love my work. So that's why I have been busy with my work. And I hope that you guys are enjoying your last days of freedom from your offices or from your schools. No, I'm just kidding. I hope you love your work and the students out there who are uh, going to universities, my viewers, cherish these moments because these moments you will remember for the rest of your life. Anyway, so jokes apart, serious face on. Today we'll be talking about six companies. These are oil producing companies and there's a lot to talk. So let's just straight hop into it. Okay, so before we dive into much deeper fundamental analysis, uh, looking at the financials of and talking about the six oil companies in this video, first let's see the general picture or the general overview of what actually has happened and what is uh, going to happen in the near future according to the analysts and the data out there. So like you guys know, oil is a commodity and being a commodity it tends to see uh, larger fluctuations in the price than more stable investments such as stocks and bonds so there are several factors which uh, influences the oil prices and we will outline those uh, factors but just to have a just to have an overview right here as you see the price per barrel of oil uh, went well, around $150 uh, in 2008, then it was fluctuating, it went down again to $45 or so, uh, $35 or so, and then 2012, 2016, and 2018, 2020, it has come down to $25. Actually, it also went in negative. And as the news says that oil prices has collapsed to its all-time low in 18 years. So this is the current situation of the oil. So the reduction in the oil price or let's say the problem with the oil price had been going on since years. Uh, it's not just at this time. Yes, at this time it became all time low. But why I'm saying this? Okay, I will explain this uh, after I explain the following article so on march 5th opc proposed a 1.5 mbd production cut now mbd is just a unit to measure the oil uh, produced or uh, in terms of barrels mbd is megabout and it's equal to 1000 kbd kilobout that means 1000 barrels per day so they proposed or uh, so they proposed a 1.5 mbd production cut for the second quarter of 2020 out of which 1 MBD would have come from OPEC countries and 0.5 MBD from the non-OPEC countries. And the following day, Russia rejected the proposal. So Russia belongs to the non-OPEC group, which actually, let's say, made Saudi Arabia angry, which is the largest uh, oil exporter and belongs to the OPEC group. And it boosted the production to 12.3 MBD. Now, Saudi Arabia could really afford that because the production cost for oil in Saudi Arabia is the lowest. And that's why Saudi Arabia did it and that resulted in a hit to the oil price and it came down to $31.1 per barrel on 8th of March. Now, like I said before, that this problem had been going on since years. This tension between these two groups had been going on since years and this might lead to the increase in oil price slowly. So, in my opinion, the oil price would not spike up uh, even after this uh, current situation will get stabilized, it might take uh, time until these two groups are agreeing upon on a mutual decision to control the excess oil supply. So as you can see, these two factors, one on top of other, made the oil price go even in negative in, the, in March. So in this situation, the companies uh, and the exporters will survive, which have buffers and a recession will contribute for sure to high levels of public debt. So this point you have to uh, remember when we will be evaluating the companies. So these two factors will highly influence our analysis. So here are the points which I summarized what we already discussed. And the first point as says, uh, responsive to decisions about output made by OPEC, because since we saw that OPEC is one of the 
uh, most influential group uh, because the production uh, from the OPEC countries are much larger as compared to non-OPEC. Uh, the second point says the laws of supply and demand influence prices. In this case, the demand was heavily reduced because uh, of this current situation. And the natural disaster, which we already have in this case, is this pandemic. And the production cost influence uh, prices. Of course, the production cost is also really important because many of the countries would be producing at a bigger loss because of the reduction in the price of oil. Uh, per barrel. So with this we have outlined the factors which have influenced the oil price recently or even in the past and which might influence the oil price of course in the coming few months even after the situation is stabilized. Now we can finally move on to our financial analysis. And here we are on our spreadsheet. So the six companies which we will be talking about today are Chevron with ticker symbol CVX, ExxonMobil, XOM, Royal Dutch Shell, RDSA, Con ConocoPhillips, COP, Bambina Pipeline, PBA, and Imperial Oil, IMO, TO. So we will discuss uh, everything what we have been discussing in, our, in my previous video. So we will go through all the financials, but I have just jot down the, the main numbers. We will not go through every number. So the main numbers which will help you also to understand how this is affecting these companies and after reviewing all the numbers and the financial details we will decide which company would be the best buy valuable or risky and we will rank these companies in that particular order so let's get started so first let's start with the summary all this data is from yahoo finance just for information so price for chevron at the time when i was making the video was 90.28 us dollars ExxonMobil 41.49 euros royal dutch shell rdsa ticker symbol 32.24 us dollars conoco phillips 43.28 Panbina 25.11 and imperial oil 21.31 canadian dollars the market capital which is worth noticing because this will help us to make our decision as well chevron is 168 uh, billion US dollars. ExxonMobil is 175.074. Royal Dutch is 121 billion uh, US dollars. ConocoPhillips is 46.4515. 415, sorry. And Pembina Pipeline 13.93 and Imperial Oil 15.643 billion dollars. So if you can see here, Pembina Pipeline is the smallest uh, amongst all with the market capital of 13.93 and then it's Imperial Oil. So there is not much big difference. And these are the smallest amongst the giants. Okay, so now let's start the financial analysis with the income statement group. So like I said, this all, all of this data is from Yahoo Finance. Total revenue for Chevron is 135 billion, ExxonMobil 249 billion, the Royal Dutch 321. So this is the biggest amongst all, and ConocoPhillips 29.575 billion, Pembina 6.9 billion, and Imperial Oil. 30.836 billion so if you see the market cap of imperial oil and pembina is uh, there is not so much big difference but there is a huge difference between the total revenue of the two so uh, imperial oil is having much more much more bigger revenue even bigger than conoco phillips as you can see here okay so gross profit is 30 billion 51 billion 28 billion 7 billion 2.04 billion and 2.374 billion so gross profit is uh, the same range if we compare these two small companies and operating income for chevron it's a negative by the way this data is trailing 12 months not 2019 so this is from the first quarter of 2020 there is a big difference uh, between 2019 quarter 4 details uh, and data and between quarter one 2020 because of the March tension what we saw the prices were uh, dropped and that has resulted in uh, bad margins or let's say reduce in their gross profit and income then let's move on to our two more important margins so gross margin for Chevron is 22% Exxon Mobil 21% Royal Dutch 9% ConocoPhillips 26% Pembina pipeline 29% and Imperial oil 8%. Now, gross profit margin is huge for Pembina pipeline. What it means, so in simple language, it's the company's net sale, not the gross, the net sale minus the cost of the goods sold. Simple as that. Okay, so as we can see here, 29% for Pembina is huge. 
26% for ConocoPhillips is also good. So anything above 20% is actually really good. And we can see here the most of the companies are above 20%. Imperial Oil and Royal Dutch Shell are below 10%, which is uh, not so good. Anyway, so let's move on to the operating margin. So operating margin simply means that the company, uh, how much the, the company is converting its revenue into profit and bigger the operating margin the bigger room for error the company has so that means the company can really uh, experiment before a profitable business turns into an unprofitable business so operating margin here for chevron is minus uh, 0.4 percent which is uh, really bad to be honest exxon mobil is four percent royal dutch is five percent ConocoPhillips is 20%, Pembina Pipeline is 25%, and Imperial Oil is 5%. So ConocoPhillips and Pembina Pipeline are amazing, and this is uh, one of the uh, really good things about these two companies. But let's go further and let's see if it's really worth. So the net income is 3.8 billion uh, for Chevron, ExxonMobil 11.38 billion, the Royal Dutch 9.8 billion, ConocoPhillips. 3.6 billion, Pembina 1.4 billion, uh, and Imperial Oil 1.71 billion. Okay, so now let's check the balance sheet. Uh, in the balance sheet, the first line which we always see is the cash. How much uh, the cash the company is holding? Because this is quite important number to look at. That means this is the amount which the company can immediately liquidify in order to pay its debt. And also this number is important because if you see that the company is paying huge dividends more than the uh, the amount of cash the company has then you are you should be knowing this that the company sooner or later will have to cut on its dividends or completely stop the dividends because it's impossible for the company to pay off its dividends when the cash is uh, much lower the actual cash position of the company is much lower so these numbers guys are really important to notice because at, as we just saw before that at this time to wither this storm the companies who are financially strong and stable can only survive so that's why we are concentrating on these numbers quite heavily uh, for especially for oil industry for we should also see actually we should see for every industry out there but at this particular moment of time in these six or six months or coming uh, uh, the whole for the whole year these are the most important things to have a look at for any company which is heavily hit by the current scenario okay so let's go further let's check the total current assets the total current assets and total current liabilities at this moment of time is quite important like i said because these are the uh, assets which they can liquidify in the coming 12 months and the coming 12 months are actually really quite important and the current liabilities are the liabilities which they have to pay off in the coming 12 months time and this is the time actually which will be difficult for them to survive so the total current assets for chevron is uh, around 28 uh, billion exxon mobil 50 billion royal dutch 92 billion that's huge that's good but it's also a bigger company so that's why it has a huge amount of assets but it's good conoco phillips 16 billion pembina 9 987 million and imperial oil 6.32 billion now like we saw here these two companies are almost uh, having the similar market cap though pembina is stronger in uh, its margin but as you can see here that the assets the current assets is huge now guys margin can be also influenced by the debt so if the company is taking huge debt and increasing its uh, capital then it's it also helps or it also influences the margin so this could be the reason i'm not sure but this could be the reason so let's anyways let's see but operating margin is good that's a really good thing so operating margin is absolutely it's uh, it should be considered for sure for any company anyways so total assets uh, are the total assets long in, including long-term assets so 237 billion is for chevron 362 billion for exxon mobil 404 billion for royal dutch this is good conoco phillips 70 billion pembina pipeline 33 billion and imperial oil 42 billion now total current liabilities 26.53 billion for chevron Exxon Mobil 63, Royal Dutch 79 billion, ConocoPhillips 7 billion, Pembina Pipeline 1.4 billion, and Imperial Oil 4.5 billion. So let's move on to the total liabilities, including uh, so this is the total liabilities that means short 
plus long-term liabilities and that's around 92 billion for Chevron, 16, 163 billion for ExxonMobil, 213 billion for Royal Dutch, ConocoPhillips, 35 billion, Pembina Pipeline, 16 billion, and Imperial Oil, 17 billion. Now, don't just, guys, don't just get uh, affected by the numbers because at the end you have to just see the ratio, which we will see right now. And this ratio, total assets versus total liabilities, will tell us if the companies uh, can survive or not. So it's really good to see these numbers for all the companies. It's quite good and it's quite stable. If we compare this with the uh, airline industry, this is uh, the oil industry is in a much better shape if, when it comes to financial stability considering, considering the assets and liabilities. So for Chevron, the ratio is 2.57. So this ratio about one means that if the company has to pay all of its liabilities by selling its total assets, after paying off its liabilities, it will still be left with some assets. And the ratio of one, of course, means that it's uh, it's good and it is considered to be, uh, let's say, a stable company. So these two companies in the first column are above two. So that means after paying all of its liabilities two times, it can pay off all of its liabilities two times. Then we have Royal Dutch 1.89, uh, ConocoPhillips almost two. Uh, Pembina Pipeline 2.02 and Imperial Oil 2.4. So this is uh, quite uh, amazing to see that Imperial Oil being the smallest uh, company is actually uh, handling its assets and uh, increasing the assets quite nicely as compared to the other uh, three, actually other four uh, huge uh, players and Chevron and Imperial Oil are having the best ratio. But Guys, above 1.5 or above 1 is good and these are above 1.5 so I would say all are uh, in a better position when it comes to paying off its uh, long-term liabilities as well. So total stockholders equity like I have uh, discussed this before in my previous videos, this number should be increasing when you compare with uh, the previous years that means the rate at which the assets of the company is increasing, it's higher than the rate of increase uh, in its liabilities. So these are the numbers. I will not go through the numbers, but I have taken the trailing 12-month uh, period uh, for the stockholders equity and you can compare it with the previous year. So I, I would say that it is increasing for all the companies, which is uh, in this list. Then we go to the current ratio. The current ratio is just the ratio of total current assets by total current liabilities. So is the same as total assets versus total liabilities but just taking total current assets by total current liabilities so the assets so the liabilities and the assets which are for the coming 12 month uh, 12 months period so uh, the, as we can see for chevron it's 1.1 for exxon mobil is 0.8 for royal dutch is 1.2 for ConocoPhillips is 2.4 for pembina pipeline is 0.7 and for imperial oil is 1.4 i have a note right here this means that ExxonMobil, according to me, is a risky business. Now, why I say this? Because like I have mentioned before, at this time, we must consider the coming 12 months uh, liabilities because this is the time when these companies will be facing the challenges. And this is a time when they have to survive, go through these difficult times. And that's why the coming 12 month liabilities is important when we are seeing at the company's finances. So that's why I would say Imperial Oil in this case uh, becomes a bit of risky business. But anyways, one ratio is never the deciding factor. So we will go through the other ratios as well. But when it comes to the current liabilities, yes, ExxonMobil is one of uh, the riskiest amongst all uh, and Pembina Pipeline as well. So these two have the lowest ratio and these are a bit of uh, risky business according to me but uh, if you see here Con ConocoPhillips is 2.4 and Chevron 1.1 and Imperial 1.4 so amongst them ConocoPhillips is one of the most stable companies right here and with the margins really good and with the current ratio as well as with the uh, total assets versus total liability ratio so for now, I would say that uh, till now, this company is has proven to be the most stable amongst all. Uh, 
or let's say a more safe uh, investment so then we go to debt to equity ratio so just to explain you guys debt to equity ratio this is investopedia i just opened the uh, investopedia and you can see it here are the key points what debt to equity ratio actually means debt to equity ratio compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity and can be used to evaluate how much how much leverage a company is using that means how much debt a company is using in order to raise capital so investors will often modify the debt to equity ratio to focus on long term debt only because the risk in long term liabilities are different than for short term debt and papers like i have told you before uh, in this case debt to equity ratio uh, will also be considering uh, long term debts so just to summarize the higher the debt to equity ratio that means the higher risk the business is at so debt to equity ratio for chevron is 22.32 for exxon mobil is 31.58 for royal dutch is 51.84 so we are talking here about long term debt uh, and not short term debt in this case and conoco phillips is 47.7 pembina is 6.651 and imperial oil is 23.08 in this case imperial oil is one of the safest uh, bet when it's coming to debt to equity ratio and especially the long term debts which we have already seen it here so in this case uh, imperial oil wins the race now let's move on to our next ratio which is price to book value now this is also a really important figure for uh, many analysts because this will tell us and in a way in one of the ways that if the company is undervalued or not so when this ratio is less than one that means you're acquiring the business under its asset value so uh, for chevron it's 1.19 for exxon mobil is 1.04 these are above its asset value that means you're acquiring this business above the asset value which is uh, not recommended by analysts uh, royal dutch is below one which is good that means the company is undervalued at this time conoco phillips is uh, at 1.5 pembina pipeline 1.36 and imperial oil 1.67 this means that imperial oil is currently at a really undervalued price but guys remember one thing that price to book value has uh, long term assets so you have to remove the intangible assets from those long term assets because actually it doesn't make sense to take intangible assets into this ratio according to me or according to my opinion because the intangible assets are the assets which you can actually not liquidify so they are non physical assets as warren buffett says so i have not taken the intangible assets into consideration and with that i see that uh imperial oil is the most undervalued company at this time and it is uh, it means that it is a good buy uh, according to just price to book value okay not uh, i have not given my final decision or my final verdict but according to this value yes imperial oil is the cheapest so price to earnings ratio as we have discussed before what price to earnings ratio actually means so price to earnings ratio i have also mentioned this in my previous videos uh, so just to summarize it in layman's language if i would have to explain price to earnings ratio i would say that for example if i would acquire chevron as a complete business and guys that's the that's the way how i see my stocks and that's the way i'm following how to choose my stocks and this is the way how warren buffett does it so i see a stock as a whole business so that's why i'm always considering its fundamentals and so for example if i want to invest in this stock i will look at its complete business and i would consider this as a that as if i'm uh, acquiring this stock with its whole business so i'm acquiring the whole company so in this case for example if pe ratio is 43.93 that simply means that when i will buy this company i would start getting the return on in my investment after 43.9 years that's all so in this case chevron is the highest exxon mobil is uh, 15.57 that means i will start getting my return on investment after 15 years or so royal dutch 13 years all 13.18 conoco phillips 13.24 pembina pipeline 13.7 and imperial oil again 9.34 so this is the lowest that means it says that means imperial oil is selling at this moment at a cheaper price so 
If you want to see price to earnings ratio in another way, it is usually higher because also the investors uh, think that this company is going to make uh, or is going to make profits or it's going to progress in future. And that's uh, why the PE ratio is higher because the future success is already baked in to the price of the stock. Personally, I believe that anything, any PE ratio below 25 is a good PE ratio and I am comfortable uh, with buying that company. Of course, when the PE ratio is high, then I have uh, I do another type of analysis, which we have seen in my uh, last video with Vata, uh, which you can see uh, in the iCard. Anyways, so here, as you see, Chevron has the highest PE ratio. That means it is currently really overvalued. Uh, and that is actually because uh, the 2019 quarter four analysis and the financials for Chevron were quite good really good uh, but anyways it's still high and I'm not comfortable uh, buying uh, Chevron at this PE ratio and uh, ExxonMobil 15.57 so the rest are lower than 2025 so it's okay for me but the lowest is Imperial Oil once again so these two factors are quite uh, sh telling me or shouting that Imperial Oil is actually at a really undervalued price right now. Okay guys, so we are heading closer to our final ranking. But before that, we must, of course, check the cash flow statement as well. And in the cash flow statement, I jot down two important figures, which I think in this case is important to notice. Uh, the two important figures are net cash by operating activities and free cash flow. So net cash by operating activities should always be positive and should be increasing year by year. It simply means that the operations of this company are actually making profit and of course should be positive in number. So in this case, if we compare the net cash by operating activities with the companies, so we see that Chevron is 26, sitting at 26.97 billion, Exxon Mobil 27 billion, Royal Dutch 48 billion, ConocoPhillips 10.3 billion, Pembina 2.3 billion, and Imperial Oil 3.84 billion. And now moving on to free cash flow. So, free cash flow is the cash at the end of the day which the company has and it can do anything with it. So, in this case, free cash flow for Chevron is 12.683 billion, for ExxonMobil 2.54, which is quite less if we compare the uh, valuation of this company uh, compared to its valuation the free cash flow is quite less but anyways royal dutch is uh, at 26 billion conoco phillips 3.6 billion pembina pipeline 560 million only which is not so good and imperial oil 2.34 billion now guys this is what i like about imperial oil because just see at their margins they are quite low even the lowest and still with those margins at the end of the day they have acquired much higher position uh, when it comes to free cash flow much higher than pembina pipeline with amazing margins so these numbers these ratios are actually making or influencing my decision at this moment towards imperial oil at the last i would like to cover the dividend yield which I know that most of you guys are curious about. But at this time, guys, like I have told you before, that the cash position of these uh, companies might go down and they would have to cut on their dividends. And honestly, I would never recommend to buy a company just on for its dividends. I always uh, recommend to buy a whole business, uh, seeing its fundamentals, seeing its financial stability, and for me, and that's just my opinion, for me, dividend is just an extra bonus coming with the company. But anyways, for, for the guys out there who are interested in the dividends, so Imperial Oil is giving a 4.08%, uh, Pambina 7.16%, ConocoPhillips 3.84%, Royal Dutch 9.68%, ExxonMobil 79 and Chevron 5.61%. So Royal Dutch is, of course, giving the most uh, highest dividend yield rate and uh, yes yeah, so if you are interested in buying a big big company which is actually royal dutch so it's one of the biggest amongst the all uh, and if you want a good dividend yield rate then yes royal dutch why not so anyways so this winds up our financial analysis for all these six companies which i think are go uh, good to be noticed or which can actually survive and weather the storm and these are my six favorite out of the lot 
and so let's rank them according to the analysis which we have done okay so here's my final ranking according to all the analysis what we just saw i would rank imperial oil as the first company then i would say conoco phillips at rank two then i would rank royal dutch at three then chevron at rank four ExxonMobil at rank 5 and at the last I would say Pembina pipeline now I would have considered Chevron at rank 2 if I would have seen or just considered the quarter 4 statements of 2019 for Chevron they were quite amazing but after looking at the financials of the first quarter of 2020 Chevron for me has come down uh, lower in the ranking And that's and that concludes our analysis so just to let you guys know that if I would have to choose one oil production stock I would go for Imperial oil and actually I already have purchased Imperial oil and this is yes so this is my choice this would be my choice but I don't want to affect you guys with my choice do your own research check these stocks and i hope these analysis are really helping you guys out to ease up that process for you guys and you're enjoying this and if you are really enjoying this content then don't forget to hit that like button don't forget to hit that subscribe button yeah keep hitting every button which is out there okay except the dislike button <laughs> and uh yeah and also uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell because then you will get to know my latest videos uh, I'm not that famous and I know that you might not be so curious about my videos but if you are then just hit that bell icon and that's all so that's all for today guys and I hope you are really enjoying your time with your families your friends with your loved ones so stay happy stay safe and see you in the next one ciao